Do you know why statisticians are so nerdy? They think it's hip to be chi-squared. All right, so we will continue using chi-square. This time we're going to do a test for homogeneity. And what that does is it compares the distribution of counts for two or more groups on the same categorical variable. In other words, do both groups behave the same? So could those groups have come from the same pool? It uses the same calculation as the goodness of fit, which is chi-squared is the sum. That's what that symbol means, the sum or sigma of all the cells of observed minus expected squared divided by the expected value. Now, because we have two sets of data, our degrees of freedom changes a little bit. Uh, it's basically the rows in your table minus one times the columns minus one. So it's the product of those two. Uh, assumptions and conditions are the same as before. The data must be counts for the observed and it has to be categories. And uh, the independence assumption still stands. The counted ind individuals should be independent from each other. Uh, we still have the expected cell frequency condition. That means all cells must be greater than or equal than five. And you have to show this in your solution to show the condition is met. Same rules of thumb, observed counts are integers. Expected counts do not need to be integers. And remember, your conclusion must be about the alternative hypothesis, not the null. And never say the null is true or proves or anything is true or proves. So let's take a look at an example. Medical researchers enlisted 90 subjects for an experiment comparing treatments for depression. The subjects were randomly divided into three groups and given pills to take for a period of three months. Unknown to them, one group received a placebo. The second group the natural remedy, St. John's wort, and the third group, the prescription drug, Posrex. After six months, psychologists and physicians who did not know which treatment each person had received, so this is a double blind, evaluated the subjects to see if their depression had returned. So the rate of recurrence is, uh, the null is that the rate of recurrence is the same for all three treatments. The alternate is that the rate of recurrence differs for some treatments. Could just be one, could be two. Um, basically, we're going to do a chi-squared test of homogeneity. So first thing we're going to do is take a look at the model and make sure that we can do the chi-squared test of, of homogeneity. Um, we want our expected counts to be greater than or equal to five. And what I'll do, you see I have a total of 60 where the depression returned. So I'm gonna divide each number in the top row by 60, uh, by three, all right? So um, that gives, divide 60 by three for the total count. So I get 20 is the actual expected value in each number in the top row. For the bottom row, I'm gonna divide 30 by three and I get 10 for each one because if the response rate was the same, you would expect that these would basically be evenly split, all right? Okay, then uh, do we check the conditions and the counts are all greater than or equal to five. The observed data is counts, so we're good there, and the independence and randomization is given, and all conditions are met. So let's go ahead and do the calculations by hand. So degrees of freedom, we have uh, three columns, minus one, times two rows, minus one, and that's uh, two times one, which is two, two degrees of freedom. My chi-squared, I'm basically subtracting 24 minus 20, squaring that, dividing by 20. 22 minus 20 squared, dividing that by 20, and so forth through the whole table. And I basically get a chi-squared value of 8.4. When I take the probability, remember we're always doing that chi-squared is more extreme than our calculated value. It's always a one-tail, upper-tail test. And I can get this number either from the table or by doing second distribution, chi-squared CDF, and go 8.4 to a large number and then your degrees of freedom. Now you can also do this test on your calculator, but remember again, they do expect to see some of this by hand. So to do it on your calculator, you're gonna set up a matrix. So let's go ahead, you press second matrix, which is right there. And then you go to edit, 
and you're going to adjust the rows and columns. Here I'm saying there are three uh, rows and two columns, so it's a little flip for my matrix, but that's okay. So 24 and 6, 22 and 8, and then 14 and 16. All right, once I've done set up my matrix, then I want to go to stat test. So I'm going to run uh, the chi-square test, and then I scroll down to where it says chi-square test. Then uh, calculator draw. But first of all, I've got to say which matrix. So I set it up in matrix A, second matrix A. So that's matrix one. And I'll just throw my observes in matrix B. And you can hit calculate. And you can see I got the same chi-squared and the same probability and even the degrees of freedom. Or you can also draw it. And you can see the distribution doesn't even have that little dip here because our degrees of freedom is so low at 2. So um, that's the probability is 0.015. Well, based on that, we can draw the conclusion since the probability is less than the alpha level we set, which in this case we're kind of using the default of 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis. There is strong evidence that the tested treatments are not all equally effective in preventing the recurrence of depression. All right. Now, here's an interesting thing. We can actually look at contributions, which are the residuals. So recall each component of chi-squared or each contribution. The standardized residual is basically just the square root of the contribution, which ends up being this. And actually, we want this form so we can get the sign. We can know if it's um, a negative or a positive, and we can see the underlying patterns to think about the ways the distribution matched, and it didn't. So let's go ahead and look at the standardized residuals for here. For the first cell, 24 minus 20 divided by square root of 20. Uh, 22 minus 20 divided by the square root of 20 and 14 minus 20 divided by the square root of 20. You can see these two are above the 20. These two are below, this one's below the 20. Then doing the next row, you can see that the biggest value really contributing is right here. <coughs> So if you look at it, it appears that people who take POSREX, first of all, they're more likely to, the contribution here is positive in terms of no signs of depression, and it's negative in terms of depression. So it seems that these folks um, are more likely to remain free of disease than those who take a placebo or St. John's natural uh, work. So what calculations should you be able to show? The same as before. The number of degrees of freedom for any table, the expected value of any cell, the component of chi-squared or the contribution for any cell, and the expression showing how the complete calculation would be done. And I think you should be able to do a residual as well, which is basically just kind of like the square root, but keeping 